Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Uh, Roxanne here and uh, I have made a huge mistake on the shading of the flesh color on this piece. I have went ahead and started. I didn't turn the video camera on. Then once I did, it just looked so terrible that I didn't want to show it to you guys. <laughs> so I took it down. Uh, anyway, if you guys want to follow along with me, um, I did go back on the very first um, uh, painting or showing you how I sketched it out on the uh, composition board, and I put the pictures on there. So they're under descriptions as links. I don't know if I did it right, but they're at least they're up there, so you guys can click on that and go and get the photo and then copy it and print it out if you want to follow along with this. Um, again, I put it on there late, so um, you'll have to go back to the first one and print it off. And then you can use either a digital projector, an art projector, or a grid method to sketch it on here. Um, and the grid method is just you would draw uh, square little boxes on your picture, and then as you look at it, you draw the same amount of boxes on your um, on your canvas or your your panel and then draw it out that way. I just find it kind of uh, time consuming so I, I just project it. I mean you got to make it look like the person anyway so it's not really cheating. I mean art is art. This isn't going to come out just like the photos reference that I'm working off of because I want to change it. I don't want to copy everything exactly. I have my own creative ability so that's what I want to put in there to show but anyway um you're seeing me go over and wipe off some layers of paint with just some uh, distilled water and a little bit of airbrush thinner and i am taking off um, a little bit here and there and then i'm erasing in other areas to take off some of that darkness um, i started out made a huge boo-boo by mixing the wrong flush color up it happens. I'm so used to spraying heavy with automotive that you get in a habit and then you just come in and blah, and that's what I did. So um, um, you always want to spray light coats when you're doing a portrait, not heavy. But anyway, um, you're going to see me, I believe, use a, a black Sharpie on the eyelashes here and on the pupil area. And I'm doing this because I am going to be color coding this or resonating it so it will be a real shiny um, piece. And um, I'm probably going to use an automotive clear resin. Not real sure yet. So I could use a black colored pencil, but um, colored pencils are waxy and automotive clear does not go well with wax you kind of are going to get a, a fish eye look or it's just not going to lay well so uh, even if you did that with a, a sharpie and clear coat it's still not going to lay well if you lay it, your clear coat on heavy so what you have to do when you're clearing any kind of artwork you will put a dust coat a fog coat a tack coat that's what our automotive artists call it and what that is, is just little fine, fine, fine specks of that clear that you're dusting over it. And then you wait 10, 15 minutes up to the person clearing it. And then you spray it again, dust coat. And then about the third time, you lay it on heavy. And what that does, it just kind of latches on to the, the, uh, the paint and that Sharpie. To where it's not gonna just like melt and just like blah all over the place so um, that's why I'm using a sharpie and not a colored pencil um, you can use color pen if you know if you're not going to clear it with automotive clear or resin you can use a colored pencil even in the hair and in places like that which gives you know I always say use what you got if it's there try it see if it works if it works great um you know and you can like sometimes I will will um protect my artwork with uh <laughs> 
an old thing, pledge, and uh, I know everybody laughs at me. Why do you do that? That's a, but you know what? Hey, it's always worked for me, so why not? You know, I don't have to use uh, auto porn or, uh, let's see, what do they call that? Uh, auto, I think it's called auto born. It's a, it's a, it's a sealer. Uh, you know, it's just a sealer. I mean, it works the same way, so why not use it? it I don't even know where I learned that at, but anyway, uh, here you're seeing me um, moistening the end of my eraser because it takes off a not just a layer of paint, but mostly it will give you really sharp highlights. And again, I'm just moistening it with the tip of my tongue. I, you know, I know you shouldn't do that. Um, but I always tell everybody, hey, every painting I do has a little bit of DNA in it. <laughs> it's just, it's just quick. You know, you can, you can have a, uh, damp rag and, and touch it with a damp rag and do the same thing. Again, you do not want to wet that eraser all the way. You just, just a little bit of moisture is all you want. Now this I'm working with is what we call a dowel. And on a competition panel, it works really well to like take sharp marks out, um, erase, and same thing as a exacto knife, it would do the same thing. Um, the dowel that I, you seen me have there was just a, an old paintbrush that I sharpened in a pencil sharpener. And then that way I can use the other end of the brush just to brush away what I've scraped off. And here I'm just going around the eyes, whitening her eyes up with a little bit of white. And I'm beginning to spray over some of those areas that I boo-booed on with the flesh color so I can come back in. Um, in this photo, they have white around their mouths because it's kind of like a hobo clown photo. So that's uh, I'll be putting that in. So if you're wondering what in the heck I'm doing, that's what I'm doing. I'm in my office and I have this clock that ticks. So you're going to hear that in the background. <laughs> it's a studio slash office. I'm not as organized as a lot of uh, artists are. I just kind of come in, start painting, and some artists have everything laid out. So I'm, I'm jealous of them, really, but they have everything laid out, put in order, how they're going to start. And, oh, man, that's not me. I just come in and start painting, like I said. And then before I know it, like, oops, turn on the video. It's all new to me. I don't even know how to get more subscribers. Except just say, hey, subscribe and send it out to other people. Maybe they'll subscribe. You know, I guess I could ask a lot of my friends, but then you feel like you're, you know, putting a strain on them to <laughs> subscribe to your channel when they're not even interested in what you're doing. There you can see I've got the white around her, her mouth and I'm starting to like, um, just working over top of the areas that I sprayed too dark. Now on Lucy's face, around the part where the beard is supposed to be like for a hobo, it's more pinkish color than it is on red skeletons. So when I start laying in her flesh color, it's gonna be a little bit different shade than than Red's is, and even Carol Burnett's, her, hers is going to be um, different. And again, that's just achieved once I mix the flesh. That's just achieved by laying uh, light coats. And when you're working with Cretex Illustration Colors, um, it's a transparent uh, base. So when you're, um, it's just, you get darker shades, by the layers of coats that you put on it. I 
hopefully in my future videos I'm gonna be I'm gonna be like focusing on some close-ups so you can see um, what I'm doing with one I'm just gonna have to work with one instead of bouncing around I I do tend to bounce around it's not the thing to do and I know that but I get bored really easy working on one piece and then I want to go and start working just like you should only be seeing Lucy right now instead you're seeing Carol's head up there and Red's up there um, if you take your paintings in sections that's a better way to paint um, and I I'm gonna try to do that as I go on with this but um, you'll see me bounce around that's just what I do <laughs> I try not to but I still do it but anyway, uh, I guess it is what it is. Art is in the eyes of the beholder. And I don't always like when I'm doing a portrait of something or someone or a pet. I, I don't always do it exactly like the photo is or the way people think I should because... You know, I, I don't want to copy something exactly. I mean, you see all these artists who, um, you know, photorealism or whatever, and that's great, but if, if, you, if you're not left an area to create, you're taking the art out of it and the fun out of it. I don't want to be a copycat. I don't want to copy a photo exactly I want to put in my own creative um, flair to it just like this photo here this is actually a mixture of two photos you know I'm taking Carol and I'm popping her head in there because I happen to find a, a photo of her where she's grabbing a hold of a um, one of those swing doors you know bifold doors and her hands out and her head so I just basically took that photo um, kind of cut her head out and uh, placed it where I wanted to place it on here and drew around it and and uh, that's came up with it so you can always add to your art so much by doing just different little things on your own make it make it your own And see, like here, I'm bouncing up there and I'm starting on Carol when I should just be focusing on Lucy. But that's just me. You guys can try to break me from this habit. Leave me little comments. Stop doing that, Roxy. And you guys can call me Roxy if you want to email me or however you want to chat back with me my name's Roxanne everybody just calls me Roxy back in the day when I did a lot of pin striping we're talking years ago <coughs> I was known as Red Fox but yeah Red Fox you get it but these guys uh you know I wasn't I didn't come from the greatest childhood these guys kept me laughing that's why I wanted to do this piece for myself in memory of, uh, in my opinion, three of the greatest, you know, comedians there was. But there's, you know, Abbott and Costello, too. They were great, too, weren't they? Um, but we just don't have wholehearted comedians like this anymore. I mean, anymore... You have comedians that all they want to do is cuss and uh, it's horrible. You know, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. And I, the thing I liked about Red Skeleton is that at the end of his show, he'd always say, God bless. And, and uh, Carol, too, she had her own uh, way to say, God bless you. And, and as far as Lucy and Ricky, I have no idea, but she made me laugh. You got to keep laughing. So see, you're seeing me spray just some white, 
white illustration over Carol's face because obviously that flesh comes way too dark. And then white will cover up your boo-boos. And when you erase a lot before you do the white, you're going to get some skin texture in there, which is good. You don't want just a flat looking face. It looks too fakey. Be nice if us ladies had porcelain skin, but that's just not reality. And that's just a little stencil that that I made myself. Um, I uh, there's a if you go online, you can uh, just type in um, freehand stencils airbrush stencils and there'll be all kinds of um, shapes pop up that you can resize in a photo program and uh, print out and then you take that piece of paper and you lay it on some marli marli um, I usually use about five um, like a five size and and you um, draw around it and then cut it out and uh, it works as a stencil. And also, I have used um, the plastic placemats that you can get at Walmart or whatever. Sometimes you can run across ones that, that are clear or that are just one solid color. And you can use that because that's all that is. And you can use that too and draw around it and um, cut it out with an X-Acto knife. I like to use the little plastic cups, too, that you can get at Walmart, but they're kind of a, a big size. Um, I think mine's four ounce, something like that. But you can order one ounce size cups off of uh, Amazon with lids. Those are a perfect size for airbrush artists. Also, I have... Um, use since I have known how to do nails and eyelashes if you <clears throat> go on Amazon and you look for eyelash extension accessories um, they'll pop up some little tiny tiny little like little tiny q-tips and I'll show them to you I'm sure in my next video or so but um, and then it's some other like swabs and those are excellent to use for getting down and cleaning out just the very barrel bottom of your airbrush and then the others are good to just like when you're airbrushing I take off the the tip of my airbrush and the needles left exposed a lot of airbrush artists do that and some don't even use the uh, the barrel uh, handle and which like if you have to adjust your needle a lot which we mostly do we leave it off so um, I use that one for just like wiping my tip off if I'm in a hurry and I want to grab a sponge or something to pick off the paint that's right on the end of my needle um, I'll just run it across there because it's wet so it will pick up not only the the paint that's dried on the tip of the needle but sometimes around the very barrel there paint will dry around that before at the end where the needle comes out and it causes um, your spray pattern not to be exactly straight so sometimes I like to go around it with that just to make sure I'm getting it all off this is just burnt umber that I'm using on Carol's hair right now. Again, you're going to want to erase as you paint or as you go. I've left the dark pencil marks up here so you can see it but as I paint and go I will be erasing the dark uh, pencil lines that I can't cover over with illustration paint you don't want your pencil marks to show 
um, unless they're adding to the the uh, portrait. I don't know how art other artists when they airbrush how they're able to show the angles so good because all all I'm seeing right now is my hand painting but you're not able to see like the paint coming out of the airbrush to go on the photo I don't know how they do it and it looked like it's a straight on shot other than you know some I've seen where you can tell it's coming from the side but others it's like really I mean you can really see the unless they learn how to paint at an angle <laughs> And I guess I could put the the camera at an angle, but then it would it would um, you wouldn't be seeing it straight on. May have to try different things. I will be erasing a lot in her hair, and I will be adding more in her hair. And it's just a process of paint, take away, paint, take away, paint, take away. And there's all kinds of tools you can use for erasing you know, the dowel on a composition panel. Um, a dowel works really well. Exacto knife works really well. Um, an old airbrush needle works well um let's see I've used all different kinds of things You don't have to wear gloves. I just usually wear gloves because I don't like to get paint on my fingernails. I am using a video program called InShot um, on the apps um, app <laughs> um, to do this video. Um, I video it through a program called Moments for iPhones. And then I pull it up in this one to uh, vo do the voiceover and any other thing. I was using video up, but it kept shutting down on me, and I don't necessarily like that because I'm paying for it. So I'm gonna have to send on me. What's up? <laughs> What's this? But now you see me going around Red's face, and see, I should be sticking to Lucy again. I don't know why I'm doing this. It's a habit I need to get out of. I love painting. I love airbrushing. It's just who I am. I, I, it's therapeutic for me. It's very relaxing. Uh, especially if you have a lot of chaos in your life. Just get alone and paint. going to be doing some different kinds of classes I think in in my new shop here I um, I'm at an age where I don't really need to be all the automotive stuff anymore so I just want to do some creative stuff and um, I think I'm going to do my first class I think it's just going to be you know how they do those wine and canvas paintings just a cute little picture and they have those well I don't drink but um, I think I'm going to do a pray, paint, and praise class. 
and maybe something just springy for spring and and then maybe my second class will be a a really acrylic class for like teaching people to actually paint not just doing a a fun thing you know it'd be like a three-day class and teach people how to work with acrylic and a brush and then all then of course I'm gonna have an airbrush class um, and then maybe I don't know I do love watercolor I've gotten a lot better at it um, but I'm not what I would call um, perfect in any way I might have to bring someone else in to do a watercolor class and then maybe a wood burning class I've done a lot of that and I like that too Right now, I'm, I I have a really awesome shot, but I don't have a lot of parking out front. So, I'm not sure if I'm going to um, see if I can get somebody to let me use their parking lot across the street or for classes. Or if I'm just going to have to rent someplace else. I don't know. We'll see. There, the bell just went off. So, uh, that means somebody's in my building. Painting doesn't come very fast, you know, it's a slow process. Thank you for watching. <laughs>